Hey guys and welcome to Top Channel 101. So I saw this uh, fire shader by Miza Bing, he's a Unity artist. So I thought uh, maybe if it's something that can be done in uh, Unity, it should be able to be, we should be able to do it in uh, Blender. So I tried it and uh, yeah, here are my results and uh, that's what I'm going to be showing you uh, how to do today. If we examine the project here, we can make it ro rotate around a cube like this. Uh, that's, that sh should be the easiest part. Uh, the mesh is deformed on a curve and uh, we can do that later but i wanted i was mostly interested in creating this here and uh yeah from the shaders you can tell that uh, he's using uh a nice texture to deform the coordinates of a gradient uh, so let's jump right into this and uh i start working i'm going to go to the shader editor i think this is a good exercise for anyone who wants to exercise their shading techniques so i'm just going to come here uh with a plane let me set the background to black a plane like this and uh, start with uh, some coordinates. I'm going to use the text coordinates. It should give me a gradient. Uh, I want to separate separate x, y, z. Separate x, y, z for, and I'm going to use the use UV coordinates. And that should give me a gradient running from left to right. I like that. And uh, I want to turn this into a line. And uh, if I look at the y coordinates, if I add a ramp, just add another node in here, make this dark and uh, make this fully white yeah something like that and i can also add another ramp here just to control uh, the scale of the line so we can have a larger line or a scaled up version i like that we want it to fade out as it goes to the right so to do that i'm going to use an, yet another gradient at this time the x gradient because it's already giving us that gradient like that and i'm going to use a map range yeah, the value is just going to be this original gradient and uh, I can use the x-coordinate for the maximum I like that. Now we have a gradient that fades out and uh, we can also add a math node in between this. If we have it add, we can change the position of that gradient. Yeah, so we can control where the gradient starts or where it ends. So let's make this line really thin like in the example. Something uh, like that. And uh, from the example here, you can see that uh, it's distorted at the edge here. So to do that, we're going to come here, look at these coordinates and add a vector math because we want to distort the, these coordinates around here. So we add some noise so that this is distorted. I'm also going to add a combined X, Y so that I can access the different components that make up this vector. So like that. And I use a noise texture. Let's add these coordinates to the Y, X, to the y axis and you can see we have started to see some distortion but it's going in the negative direction and usually and that's because the noise value has a little bit of offset to it so let's subtract that offset using a math node i set this to subtract and now we only need to subtract 0.5 and this should go back to the middle of our uh, setup and uh, if i bring the noise up you can see we get some good distortion but it's going throughout the mesh and uh, but uh, if you look at the example you're looking at, uh, this distortion is mostly at the, or, or the turbulence that you're seeing is mostly at the end there. So to fix that, so that it's only, the, so that the turbulence is mostly here, we can use a multiply node. I'm just going to use uh, this here, change this to multiply. Now, if I multiply this, I increase the distortion. But if, if I increase the value, the multiplication value, I increase the distortion or the turbulence. But if I bring it down to zero, I remove uh, the turbulence completely. So if we have a gradient that has values ranging from uh, 1 to 0, that means that uh, values here are going to have turbulence and uh, that turbulence is going to reduce uh, as we go there. So we can use another combined x, y, uh, another x, separate x, y. We can bring in the UVs and uh, if we look at the UVs, we get that. Uh, so this is inverted. Uh, black usually represents zero and uh, white represents one. So I want to invert this, but uh, let me show you first what is happening here. If I connect this to the math and I just preview the node, you can see we have most of the distortion here instead of here. Let me clear some of these. So, and uh, if I wanted to amplify that distortion, I just need to duplicate this math node and uh, just multiply. So the multiply operator just usually scales up whatever value you add them, you add into it. Uh, so it's scaling up whatever value we have here. And uh, that's why we're seeing a lot of turbulence on this side than this side, because here, we, the values here are, are 
on the gradient are zero and the values here are one and uh, when we multiply those values we are getting larger values but uh, for the zero because zero times uh, any value it uh, that stays zero uh, we are still not getting any distortion here so we want to flip this around i'm just going to so that the turbulence is more at the tail instead of the front here i'm going to use a ramp another color ramp flip that around uh, like that yeah we want to see this animated so that we can see how we can use this so i'm going to add where are our coordinates so this is our noise texture i want to add some coordinates to this noise texture so i'm going to use control ctrl t to add some mapping and I want to move this along the x-axis. I'm just going to use a driver. I'm going to type in hash frame divide by 100. That's too slow. Let's try divide by 30. That's too, that's, that's good enough, but uh, the frame, I, I want to get a smoother animation. So I'm going to change my frame rate from 34 to 60 so that we get a more smooth animation, but uh, that's making it a bit fast so i'm going to change this to divide by 60 and now uh, we have something like that so this is a nice way to make some smoke without doing any sim simulation any fluid simulations and now uh, we remember we have this value here that we can change use to adjust uh, the scale of the noise and since this is based of few views you can scale the mesh up and uh, get something like that Okay, so now that we have that, what else can we do? Uh, we can apply, we can use an emission shader and uh, transparency. Just blend the two and use this as a mask for our transparency. Uh, then I can also add a gradient, a gradient or a ramp, any colors I want. Maybe I want this to be fire. I can create a fire gradient. I can increase the strength of this. Uh, since we are using EV, I can turn on bloom and uh, make sure I use alpha blend, no shadows. Now, if I go to this alpha blend, let me see, let me make sure that uh, everything is set up correctly. I think I should be switching this around like that. Yeah, now we have some fire trails. Now, if you want to do something like uh, what he did in the in this, like this, maybe we could uh, adjust uh, this gradient a bit, add room for some smoke. So the smoke is just, you just have to play with the gradient to add room for smoke. Yeah, so if you wanted to do something like this all you have to do is just add some resolution to this with subdivisions and uh, let's create a curve object like that and i can do a curve deform on this like that and uh, that should uh, give us the smoke after distorting the fire on a curve all you have to do is just create a new object and uh, we're just going to use this as a placeholder for our geometry nodes and uh, what we can do now is create some points preview those points and uh, instance on those points instance on points and uh, what we want to instance is our fire plane so i'm just going to grab this i can see now we have our fire so we only have one point but uh, we can make more points and i can see the fire is getting more darker and darker because we are layering our different levels of these trails on top of each other so if we want to give this some random rotation like uh, what we have in the curve what we can do is just we can just create a random value for the rotation. So I'll just create a random value here and I'll also separate the X, Y components for the rotation. And because all I, all I want to do is create a random rotation for, for this, for the Z rotation of the object. And uh, we're still having some overlapping. So I'm also going to scale up, randomly scale up uh, the, these. Yeah, maybe we have too many points, it seems. Another thing we could do is randomize the position of these points. 
So I'm going to use a set position here. And I just come grab this for the offset and uh, create a, a random value for the Z. And uh, we should have some randomization like that as well. Now to keep this animated, we can also randomize the maximum rotation here. So I can, oh, we can animate the random value here for the rotation. So I can add a frame divided by 60. Okay, I think I need to be, it has to be negative frame divided by 60 so that it's always going in the other direction. Now you can obviously add more detail, add more work to this to make it more, I don't know, to make it more detailed. If we go in the shaders, in the shader editor, we can always tweak the colors and just play with the hue a bit to get varying colors. And uh, again, you still have all these other controls yeah, so that's how you can uh, make something like that. Uh, anyway, I'll thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video.